Hello everyone, so I'm Victor Bayer and I'm going to tell you about CCQTL, which is a tool we have been developing at the Institute Pasteur to facilitate QTL mapping in the collaborative course. So not all of you may be familiar with QTL mapping, so I will start with a little bit of background. Most traits or phenotypes like blood pressure or susceptibility to diseases are not controlled by one single gene, but instead by multiple regions along the genome, each contributing to some extent phenotypic variation. And these are called QTL for quantitative trait loci. And when we are interested in a given phenotype, we wish to identify this region, and that's what QTL mapping is about. Finding where these regions are in the genome, how many are these, how much do they contribute to the phenotype, etc., with the ultimate goal to go down to the causal gene and DNA polymorphism. To perform QTL mapping experiments, we use what are called mapping populations. Several populations exist, the collaborative cross is one of them, and more specifically, it's an increasingly used high-diversity mouse population that proved to be a great model for biomedical traits. QTL mapping proceeds as follows. You've got your mapping population with genotypes are known, and you're going to phenotype this individual for your trait of interest. And then you put together the genotype and phenotype information in such a way that you assess all along the genome the strengths of association with uh, the phenotype. And that's what's given by this curve coin blood profile. And when you pass a statistical threshold, that tells you that here in the genome, you've got a QTL. So that's quite intuitive. But in practice, phenotyping experiments are heavy to conduct and all the analysis steps that come next require quantitative skills. And as a matter of fact, experimental geneticists who perform QTL mapping often need support on that front to benefit from best practices in the field. Such support is over tricky to provide, and this for two reasons. First, because analyzing QTL mapping experiments requires lots of back and forth to the data, testing different parameters, moving out layers. And second, because decisions like choosing a covariate, for instance, can only be made by the person who knows best the trait under scrutiny. And building on that, who are willing to make the geneticist autonomous in analyzing their QTL mapping experiment. And for that, we set up CCQTL, which combines a web interface, the database system, and most importantly, warranted record tracking and reproducibility. And for that, we build on Galaxy Powered Analysis Workflow. So how does that look like? Say that you work on a given project. I am at deciphering the genetic basis of resistance to virus X. And in this context, you run the first round of phenotyping experiment. What you're going to do first is to upload on the interface an input file that contains the phenotype and covariate values for all the mice you've phenotyped so far, and this defines a first experiment at the interface level. So now that the data are uploaded as one experiment, one first thing to do is to plot them, at the very least to check whether the distribution is compatible with QTL mapping, and if not, to transform them with the several options we provide. You can then proceed with your very first QTL mapping analysis, and this is done at the click of a button by launching a pre-configured Galaxy workflow, and this will give you a first round of results you can start exploring in the database and I will go uh, in the interface, and I will come to that later. You can then wish to tune some of the parameters, for instance, passing sex as a covariate, and that will give you a second distinct analysis, and you can further iterate with yet another analysis and yet another experiment, and so on and so forth, and all that gets stored in an organized fashion in the database. And because the more you use it, the more data it contains, the more miss it can get. We also provide control vocabulary so that you can annotate your phenotype, thus making the database more searchable in the long run. Another key feature of CCQTL is that it offers a breadth of visualization to further explore the QTL mapping result. So you can, of course, explore the load profile by zooming in and zooming out, but you can also ask yourself, like, which parental origin associates with high or low trade values, or what are the genes in the QTL interval? Like, do we have any obvious candidate for the trait? We are interested in. And to help you answering this question, we provide several plots and tables which are all interactive, but can as well get exported, for instance, to fill in the lab notebook. To summarize, what we've set up is a comprehensive web interface for QTL mapping the collaborative cross. It features a seamless procedure to go from data exploration to candidate gene, thus making best practices in the field accessible to non-specialists. It satisfies the absolute requirement for record tracking by using Galaxy's built-in reproducibility, and the database structure permits the safe and organized storage of both raw phenotypic data and analysis results. Last but not least, CCQTL can be deployed anywhere. To do so, it simply requires a Galaxy instance for the analytic part, so that can be any instance as long as the CCQTL utilities are installed, and as for the deployment of the interface and database, that can be done locally or using a Kubernetes cluster. I will finish by acknowledging the people involved in this work, with a special credit to Remy, who is in charge of the world web development. So thank you all for your attention and don't hesitate to get in touch.